Hey everybody, Danny Benes here, and I'd like to talk to you about a brand new show I'm creating called Retro Gaming on a Budget. In this video series, I plan to talk about games for people who want to buy retro games but don't really want to spend a ton of money on them. I've wanted to make a series like this for a little while now, and now I'm finally getting around to it. So now allow me to explain more about what this show is all about, and the rules I'll be setting for it. Rule number one is, games must be $20 or less before tax at the time of the video's release. Sometimes you watch these videos of people talking about games or playing these games that are quite expensive. Even if they're really good, someone might not want to spend a lot of money it takes to play the game. Take Mario Party for example. A lot of the ones that people like go for really high prices. Almost a hundred in some cases. Even if the game is good, most people are not going to want to spend that much money for that one game, unless they're hardcore fans. Well, the games I'll be talking about will be games that will go for, at most, $20, before tax. I don't know the prices of taxes in everybody's area, so that's why I say that. But anyway, $20 is generally considered the good budget price for someone who wants to save money while buying a game, and for a retro game, that, that can be pretty good. But if $20 is still a little bit much for you to buy a retro game, I will be talking about games that are also a little cheaper than that. The second rule I'll be going by is the games must be priced by CIB, or Complete in Box. This won't really count for cartridge-based games. Complete in Box means it comes with pretty much everything, the game, the case, and the manual. Some people are okay with not having the manual, but they at the very least want to have the case with the game. Especially for disc-based games, as there's less of a chance of scratching. So whenever I talk about the different prices, I'll mostly be going for the CIB prices. Again, unless it's cartridge-based games, in which case it may just kind of depend. The third rule I'll be going by is that the games must have the equivalent of at least a 7 out of 10 from critics and audiences. Mostly from audiences, but critics as well. There are actually a ton of retro games that go for really cheap prices, but a majority of them are either generic sports games or games in general that people just don't want to buy. And around half the time, that's because the games get low ratings from both critics and audiences. So the games I'll be talking about are at least still going to be good. Maybe not the best, but at the very least it'd be enjoyable enough to want to come back to time to time. Of course I'll also talk about games that are better than that, but I'm sure you know what I mean. The fourth rule I'll be going by is my definition of retro, which means a game system that's at least two generations old. I know that for a long time, whenever people would describe a retro game system, they would mean things like the Atari 2600, the original Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, the Sega Genesis, and all of them. But as time moves forward, more and more game systems get added to that list. But no one has ever really set official rules on how old something has to be before it's quote unquote retro. So I'll be doing it based off of my definition of retro, which again, I think that a system that is at least two generations old is considered retro. And at the time of this video's release, that is the seventh generation. And that generation contains the Nintendo DS, the PlayStation Portable, the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and the Wii. Of course, those are just the newest types of retro game systems I'll be talking about. I'll mostly be talking about the ones before that generation. The fifth role I'll be going by is what order I'll be talking about the games in. I'll be going in order by alphabet and by age rating, and in some cases by when the games were released. The alphabetical part kind of comes natural to me. But the age rating part is mostly for if parents are watching. I'll start off the videos with the lowest age rating and then gradually go to the highest age rating of the video. That way if there are any E or E10 rated games I can get those out of the way so that the parents can just watch that part and look at it and say, okay, I'd want that for my kids. But as I go into the potentially T or M rated games, I'm sure most parents are not going to want to get their kids one of those. Everyone's situations are different, but I know that's generally how it is. The sixth role I'll be going by is that the pricing will be based on the app I use called GameEye and also eBay. GameEye is a free app you can use to track the prices of different games, systems, and accessories. It's not the only one of its kind, but it's basically one of the main things I'll be using to track the prices of the games I'll be talking about. But just in case I need a second opinion, I will also be looking at sites like eBay, just in case. Various used media stores go for various prices on their games, so that's why I'm kind of going with websites. And the final rule I'll be going by is if the subject of a video contains the same game I've already talked about in a previous video, then I'll only briefly mention that game. 
That way you won't have to hear the same information twice in a row, or so many times in a row. The only exception is, how old is that video that I've talked about the game before, so, you know, it may depend on that situation. And those are pretty much all the rules I'll be going by when I make these videos, and the basic descriptions of them. I hope you're looking forward to this series, and let me know what kind of video you'd like to see, whether the subject is on a certain franchise, on a certain game system, or certain genres, whatever you'd like to see. Now, how often these videos will come out will kind of depend on my mood. That's basically how it is for this channel. If I feel like making a certain type of video, then I'll make it. I don't want to make a certain type of video if I'm not feeling like it because then the video may not turn out as good. But if I didn't feel like doing it, then I wouldn't have made this video. So I hope you're looking forward to it. If you'd like to see these videos when they first come out, go ahead and subscribe and hit the little bell or whatever YouTube has now to notify you about these new videos. But until then, have yourself a good day.